From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Good morning and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Joe Paris. What a week it was. Election results are in and we will have a runoff in the city of Eagle, but we'll have more on that later on in the program. The most talked about race in the Treasure Valley, the election of Boise's mayor. Let's take a look at the final tally, of course, the caveat being that the results need to be officially certified and they will. But incumbent mayor Lauren McLean wins by about 7,400 votes over retired Boise Police Chief Mike Masterson. People of Boise have spoken four more years for Mayor McLean. And with us this morning in studio, Mayor Lauren McLean. Um, we're taping this on Thursday, so only two days after the election. How are you feeling today? You energized? I, I'm energized, but as I told you, I'm ready for a little rest. Looking forward to being in Stanley and hiking this weekend. But feeling energized and really optimistic for the future and excited to get to work. I wanted to start with the video, actually. And this is going to be a video that we shot at your event coming up uh, to the podium back on Tuesday night. When you're getting up to the podium right here and you're starting to address your, your speaker or your, uh, your, your crowd here as the speaker, what was going through your mind? Um, you know, I try to remember to enjoy it, right? As you're, you're just kind of going. But I was thinking about all the work that I've done with my team, we have done together the last four years, um, and all the people that made that moment possible and what it would mean for the work we get to do in the next four. And so it was both like, I felt deeply, deeply grateful and of course energized um, and really excited for the work ahead. Of course, this cycle, you don't have to go to a runoff. Um, you know, was that in the back of your head, I guess, going into election night? Well, when you said runoff at the top of the show, I just found myself with a little neck. No, we expected that we would not be. I mean, we were working, of course, from the beginning to avoid that. Um, and with all the conversations we had with Boiseans at the doors, and we were very optimistic going into Tuesday evening that we would be done. We wanted to stick the landing and just get to work. In terms of experience, how would you compare, I guess, you know, the last four years to kind of leading into your first term as mayor? Yeah, you know, the last four years have been challenging ones, not just for our city, but the state, the country, and around the world. And so there were a lot of headwinds. We've all experienced a once in a hundred year pandemic, you know, need for police reform here and around the country. You know, a lot of questions about who we are as a nation and where we're headed, um, housing, needs here and so there's a lot of work we did and I'm so proud of the fact that we were able to juggle so much um, in my early days as mayor and through the first term and we brought that experience and hard work with us into the election where we get to talk about not only how we delivered for Boiseans, um, but what was ahead building on the momentum we have. And I spoke to people in the community and you can really say this about any race. They say, you know, this is really a referendum on Boise's mayor. How do people evaluate Mayor McLean? And 55% said, absolutely. We want her again for four more years. 43% uh, they chose your opponent, Mike Masterson. When you think about those 43%, how do you bring them into the fold and say, okay, I'm listening. I know you voted for someone else, but I I'm here to serve you. Sure. And I've done that every Every time I've been on the ballot, especially four years ago, I will say time and time again, I'm a mayor for everyone and I will continue to be thinking about everyone. And I often think to the conversations I had on doors this time around, you know, as we've said, our team knocked over 55,000 doors, I knocked a couple thousand myself. And there were times I had conversations that did, with folks that weren't going to vote for me. But at the end of the day, there's so much more that we have in common and so much more that unites us. And that's what I bring with me into the work. How many doors did you knock? What was it? I want to say it was close to 2,000 myself. Wow. And at the beginning, you know, I had a knee injury, so it was yeah. very, very slow and be a little nervous that dogs were going to come out of the house. And man, at the end of the day, I was really tired hitting those last couple doors. By the end, I was, you know, able to walk quickly and had incredible conversations, many of which I'll hold with me forever, whether it was like meeting brand new newborn babies, you know, talking to a woman whose mom lived in the house and was in hospice and dying, um, or hearing from parents who've sent their kids off to college and they're so worried that their kids won't come back. And like those conversations that I had at the door um, are some of the most special things about having a campaign and, and campaigning that way. And in the same way, really, the, the last four years and the next four years, I'll spend a lot of time with Boiseans, hearing their stories, letting that inform the work that I do um, and helping me be a better leader for the city that I love. I think you have the answer to my question here, um, but I'll ask it anyways. Do you find that Boise, you know, it's this bigger city, it's growing, but do you still find like it's this manageable city where you go one on one, door to door and, and meet people? Oh, oh, definitely. And I've said to people too that, well, so, so often we think everybody in different parts of the city, different neighborhoods are really different. We are so similar. 
you know, we're all building our lives, living our lives, have hopes for the future, um, and love our neighborhoods and love the city and the place we call home, regardless of where we live. And we want the best for Boise, and that's what I hear and have heard thousands of times in every neighborhood of the city. I'm curious, because I know as the media, we have, we have the, the topics that we focus on in policing and housing, and of course, you could take a look at the KTVB debate on those two topics, but um, in, in terms of what you heard from the people yeah. of Boise, what were the topics they were talking about? The, the things that I heard most from Boiseans were the need to keep at the work that we're doing on housing um, because of how much the cost of housing is impacting either them or their kids or folks that they know. Um, that was time and time again, that's what I heard most. Um, and then, you know, issues related to growth. Are we going to be able to afford to pay for the growth ahead? Um, how do we make sure that we have parks and open space and vibrant neighborhoods as we grow? Those were the top two issues that I heard from folks. But I heard a lot too, and I'd say probably the third thing um, is a concern about, you know, whether or not there was a place for them here mm -hmm. um, as our state is changing um, and how much Boise meant to them um, and how much they needed to know that they had council members and leaders and neighbors that welcomed them and that we truly remained a safe and welcoming city for everyone. Um, for you, um, when you're hearing the concerns, what was like the top concern from people in terms of if they belong here? The, I heard a lot about the steps the legislature has taken mm -hmm. to target um, trans kids, the LGBTQ community, our librarians and books, um, and yes, women and doctors. And um, I had real conversations with folks whose you know, trans kids have left and they don't think they'll ever come home. And you know, women of childbearing age that felt like it was probably safer um, to go have their kids elsewhere and then maybe come back. And really real poignant, like tear jerk conversations um, and then turning that back into, yes, you have a place here. Yes, this is a safe and welcoming city for everyone. We need you, we want you, we see you. And you're a part of what makes Boise so vibrant and special. And we will continue to fight, and I will with our council, to protect the people of Boise and make sure this is a safe and welcoming city for everyone. And these social issues is, uh, came up in the KTVB debate, and one of the, I guess, topics that viewers had pointed out to us is, okay, they're very different on this, is you had spoken about getting involved with social issues and kind of talking about statewide things, where Mr. Masterson said, I don't really know if that's the mayor's place. Yeah. Um, now that you've been reelected looking forward, I guess, what type of involvement or what type of uh, community action do you see yourself taking? It is absolutely the mayor's place. Leaders cannot equivocate on the values that their community holds and that they hold. And you know, I hear it from business leaders. I hear it from residents. You know, these are issues that we have to address if we want to continue to be a safe, welcoming, vibrant community with job opportunities and everything else. So as a mayor, you both have to address the top issues like housing, and we're doing that, delivering on homes with great partnerships, and also protect the people that call this place home because you can't have one without the other. Um, in terms of policing and public safety, I know that was a topic that a lot of people were curious, you know, could this switch the vote? Now that yeah. you know that you've won, you have another four years, what's your mindset heading into the beginning of next year in terms of policing and public safety in our city? I'd say it's exactly where it's been. I didn't hear it a lot on the doors. Mm. I heard so much other, so many other things as we mentioned on the doors. So my head is right where it was. We're gonna keep this city safe. And crime has dropped every year. That's because we made intentional invest investments, not only in policing, but in our neighborhoods, because we gotta have safe, vibrant, connected neighborhoods. We're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna make sure that you know, as we grow, our police department grows, we'll keep adding positions, we'll work with the officers to make sure that the city remains safe um, and address things as we need to. I'm curious. And I, oh, also, I also want to add, too, that my mindset's the same because we made a great hire in the Office of Police Accountability in Nicole McKay. Accountability is so important. Everybody who breaks a law needs to be held accountable, and we've got to maintain that community trust that we have with our police department so that office is so important to have a professional leader in that position. And with Chief Weiniger, as we look to what's next, um, in keeping this city safe, he's a great partner and he's a great leadership team within the department. That's something I wanted to talk about more during the debate. We kind of ran it out of time. Tell me about your thoughts of, of Chief Weiniger. I mean, he, to be honest, he came into a very difficult situation. Yeah. He has weathered a difficult storm. Now on the other side of the politics of it, the election's over. What can you say about Chief Weiniger and his job at Boise Police? Sure, and I'll say I wish we had so much more time in the debate. There was one point yeah. where he said one more question. I thought it was just in that section and then it was over. Yeah. The time just flew by. Flew by. The, um, look, these are issues around the country. Mm -hmm. And Boise is a big city. And so just like other cities, we are experiencing, you know, 
transitions, changes within a police department. As a community grows, policing, its training, expectations needs to change and grow with the community. And, and so Chief Weiniger did come in at a tough time. Everybody leading police departments in the last four years, I'd say three years, have had really tough times. I've appreciated his approach to helping us um, reduce the number of retirements, increase the number of recruits for the classes that we have in, in the coming year, um, and then help me make sure that as we increase positions, we have a plan to fill them. I know that there's uh, a lot of what I would call lazy comments that were thrown out during the race. People say, well, it's going to turn into Portland. And I don't really know what that meant. When you heard people say your policies on policing is to turn Boise into Portland, how did you take that? You know, I took it as it's an easy, it's an easy throwaway comment, just like, what did you call it? Lazy. A lazy comment, that's a good word. Look, if we were not, if we were gonna have the problems as a city that s cities around this country had during COVID and after COVID, it would have started, right? We would have seen that. But we have been driven, as Boiseans have, not just my office or the partners we have to address housing, but everybody in this community is committed to ensuring that we tackle challenges with creativity and innovation, we work hard together, and we beat the odds, and we are doing that. So in my mind, when I heard that, I felt like, ah, that's an easy way to throw, because of course people are scared about um, what's happening yeah. in these coastal cities. It is not good, but Boiseans have been clear that we're not gonna let that happen here. We haven't, and we won't. There's a lot of work to do. I'm committed to doing it, have great partners, in the space to serve people and protect the city that we love today and into the future. And I'm also curious, do you think it's fair to even compare Boise to Portland? Uh, to me, I've, it's always an interesting conversation when people don't point to specific policies and they just say, well, it, it's gonna turn into that. Do you ever think that's a fair comparison? Oh, uh, you know, it's really rainy there. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, uh, no. There, and people will say, well, you want, what city do you want Boise to be like? I want Boise to be Boise. Um, and Boise is Boise, and it's because we have always tackled problems in our own ways, been forced to create solutions on our own because we're so isolated. There is no place like Boise, and there's no community we would model ourselves after other than making sure that we be the best Boise we can possibly be. Do you ever get calls from other mayors asking, you know, how can we be more like Boise? <laughs> when I, you know, sometimes when I talk about Boise, People will say, like not from here, mm -hmm. people will say, oh, we've never heard a, a politician talk about their city in the way you talk. Or, and I do get calls, I get calls, like can, you, can I connect with your team to talk about housing? Can I connect with your team to talk about climate? Like what's happening with safety in your community because we're really struggling here. And there's, I lean on a lot of mayors myself for ideas um, just so I understand what's happening out there and I'm always willing to help um, by connecting our staff with others, both here in the region and of course around the country. But ultimately, yeah, pe people know that there's something special about this place. We know it, um, other people know it, um, and of course they wish they had it too. We're on Viewpoint this morning with uh, the again elected mayor, Lauren McLean. We do have to take a real quick break, but when we come back diving into more and looking ahead to the future, <laughs> you're watching Viewpoint back right after this. At California Closets, we believe every space deserves a custom solution. We had the most wonderful experience. Our designer listened to our vision and respected our budget. That's what we call practical magic. Request a free design consultation. Is it possible to be more capable and more practical? Be able to perform here and here make a statement while barely making a sound and command the road as well as what lies ahead how we get there matters fred meyer gives you so many ways to save on top of our lower than low prices enjoy over 500 dollars in savings every week with digital coupons earn fuel points to save up to one dollar per gallon and with a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Plus, our weekly sales will keep your budget merry and bright. So get rewarded and save. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Doesn't really matter who you are, where you are, where you live, you have it to any family. People reach a crisis moment and they don't see any other way out. 
suicide is the fourth leading cause of death for people ages 25 to 34. Hi, I'm Senator Ron Wyden. We can all play a role in preventing suicide. If you or a loved one is experiencing a mental health challenge, call or text 988 today. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters in this station. Those first days are really a blur. You can't really plan for something like this. Starting Sunday, a four-part series on the university's continued healing and honoring the four students lost. News at 10 tonight on KTVV. Welcome back to Viewpoint. We are chatting this morning with Mayor Lauren McLean, who has won another four years leading Idaho's capital city. Uh, Mayor McLean, something I wanted to talk about that I thought was interesting. During the campaign, uh, you were criticized for going back to Washington, D.C. and having connections with, I, I would say, major players in D.C. Of course, when President Biden visited here a number of years ago, you got to meet him out on the tarmac. Um, for you, why do you think it's important to have connections to D.C.? And why do you, I guess, I guess, what do you think you can learn from, you know, some of these other folks? Sure. You know, I think it's really important to have connections in D.C. to advocate for our city at a time when there is the potential for record investment um, in cities and states around the country. So a big part of my job, um, of course, is, is being here and being mayor. And then part of that is advocating for Boise because we've got great programs and housing and climate action um, and even jobs that could just be leveraged so many times if we were able to receive investments from with federal dollars. So I'll talk about a couple. Amtrak. Yeah. I, I got a text from the mayor of Caldwell yesterday saying congrats and then I said let's go get that train yeah. <laughs> and got a little emoji back, a little train. You know, we are working hard to restore service between Boise and Salt Lake because that'll also put people in train cars between Boise and Caldwell and throughout Idaho communities down to Salt Lake. That takes advocating for Boise. Um, the CHIPS Act, mm -hmm. you know, Micron would not be investing $15 billion here in our city if the CHIPS Act hadn't passed. So, you know, at the behest of people lobbied for the passage of the CHIPS Act because we knew of the, of the potential benefit it would have for Boise. Um, and then now that Micron is committed to Boise and they've applied for CHIPS funding, we're gonna lobby for that CHIPS funding because we want them to receive that investment because of what it means for workers here in our own city. And then with the infrastructure bill passage and the IRA passage, you know, we've got climate action plans. We were able with ARPA dollars to advance electrification of city buildings, save Boiseans money on electricity in the long run, with those investments. So we'll continue to beat the pavement, just like we do with the legislature, um, for Boise's interests to benefit Boise today and into the future. When you were heading into your first term, did you ever imagine, you know, okay, I'm gonna have to go to DC because you know, Boise doesn't exist in a vacuum? You know what, I, I knew that you went occasionally, but I was told early on that they have to know that Boise's out there and so do what you can. But then we had two years where you couldn't travel. So that meant a whole bunch of Zoom meetings advocating for our city and then being there when I could be. Um, and then of course, welcoming the administration. You know, the Secretary of Interior came to see Snake River Birds of, of Prey and to talk at the SEJ conference at Boise State. And um, we've had the Secretary of, um, or the leader of the VA yeah. come to, to visit the VA. So the administration comes through because there's a federal presence here like there, there is in every state. I'm curious, uh, in terms of mindset heading into your second term, how different is it than heading into the first? Of course, you have a record to fed now. Also, heading into the first, we didn't know we were going to have a global pandemic. Right. But how does the mindset, I guess, feel different uh, four years later? Sure. You know, one thing that I said was it is so different because while we were working on plans and ready to launch, before we could really think about we, how we were going to implement all the things I wanted to implement in the first four years, we were dealt a global pandemic. So I had to turn a city and a new team into a, a remote workforce following the governor's stay home order for a little while. We had to figure out how we worked remotely. We had to figure out how we protected the community and worked with hospitals and, and the large business employers here at the same time that we were building a team. So this four years, as I think about you know, heading into the next, it's more like, oh good, I can just get to work. And we've been working the whole time, but now that the campaign's behind us, it's say, we're saying, okay, we're gonna take everything that we have delivered on for Boiseans. Big progress in housing, there's more to be done. Great progress in jobs, we gotta support Micron and all the other companies in this valley to retain their workforce, to grow their workforce. And we, and we can build on the record that we have for the last four years, it's still going, yeah. you know, for a couple more months, um, and then take that and run 
in a second term. Is there anything you didn't get to project or topic wise in your first term that you're really hoping to get to and you would think to yourself, I hope I get a second term because I really want to do X, Y, or Z? Oh, you know, that's a great question. For me, so much of it was I, and, and I thought long and hard about what, whether I was gonna run for a second term because these last four years have, have been a lot. It's been yeah. a joy. Like, every day has been a joy. I, I knew I needed to make sure that I had in the well what Boise deserves and needs um, in their leader to really advocate for the city and, and to continue to move us forward. And when I, when I knew that the, the answer was yes, it was because there's so much more work to be done. We couldn't afford to pause and reset um, on the work around housing. And I wanna see those homes for families exiting homelessness open next fall. I wanna see through the, the design plans that we have for folks exiting homelessness next to Fire Station 5. I wanna see the impact that our climate action plan, you know, growing our geothermal, the partnerships with Idaho Power has, and I want to continue that work, and I didn't, I wanted to make sure it wasn't stopped. Um, and then, of course, as I think about wh what's next in the next four years, I want to keep pushing on Amtrak, and importantly, keep working to ensure that our city and the values that our city has are set up and poised to support the businesses that are investing here, like Micron, so we can grow out those jobs and all the investment that will come with it. Just like the debate, these segments fly by, and I wish we had more time. Oh, shoot, already. But before we wrap up, I did want to ask you, of course, you're the mayor, you're going to be the mayor again for another four years, but as citizen Lauren McLean, what excites you most about Boise right now? Oh, I love that question. Um, we, there's, and I've, I, it's so hard to pinpoint like a word for Boise, yeah. right? It's that, it's that energy, that sense of connection we have um, that you feel, and that's what excites me about this city. It's, it's walking down the street, saying hi to my neighbors. It's soon I'll be able to run again, putting on my running shoes and heading onto a trail. Um, and it's thinking about together um, about what's next. Um, and that sense of connection we have to each other and commitment we have to this place. So it's not, I can never just use a word or say this is what excites me the most because it's Boise and it's living here and being deep in community that is what excites me most about this place. I would imagine door knocking kind of reminded you of all the things you fell in love with. It, it, I love door knocking and it's because of that. We get to look each other in the eye and talk about what matters and that's the people around us and the lives we're building for the future. Well, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean heading into a second term. Thank you so much for your time here on Viewpoint. I know over the next few years we will check in with you again, but uh, she is off to go enjoy some, some well-deserved time off, so we appreciate the mayor joining us here on Viewpoint. We're going to step aside, but when we come back, we got a little bit of an election recap for you in the Ada and Canyon County areas. Don't go anywhere. Viewpoint returns right after this. Keep watching and learn how Renewal by Anderson makes replacing your windows and doors really affordable. You could repaint the house, you could redo the deck, or you could take on a project that actually saves you money. Replacing your worn out drafty windows and patio doors with Renewal by Anderson can cut your energy bills and boost the value of your home. You could get started today. And stay tuned to hear about our Black Friday sale. Oh, and here's something a lot of people don't know. When it comes to replacing your worn out windows, material matters. Our Fibrex composite is a revolutionary blend of wood fibers and thermopolymers, offering the strength and stability of wood with the low maintenance appeal of vinyl. And unlike vinyl, Fibrex gives you a durable frame that resists warping, cracking, and rotting. Choose a window material worthy of your home and upgrade with Renewal by Anderson. And we mentioned our sale, right? The details are coming. We promise you'll like them. Now let's talk about installation. We all know that finding a reputable contractor to replace your windows and doors can be a headache. At Renewal by Anderson, we offer a turnkey solution. One company, trusted since 1995, to handle everything, consultation, design, installation, and warranty. We make energy efficient, low maintenance windows that fit your budget. So reach out to us, we'll show you how. It's Renewal by Anderson's countdown to Black Friday sale, and it's our best offer of the entire year. This month only, save 25% on windows and save 25% on doors. Plus, pay nothing for a year. Don't miss our best offer of the entire year. Call before our countdown to Black Friday sale ends November 30th, 208. 
427-8900. Welcome back to Viewpoint. Well, Ada County saw a record turnout for a local election this past week with about a 36% voter turnout, higher than 40% in Eagle. Now, the voters, they made their voices heard, and we also heard from some of the candidates. KTVB's Jude Binkley has a look across the valley. Eagles election season isn't over yet. Their mayoral race going into a runoff due to no candidate getting more than 50% of the vote. The runoff will take place the first week of December between City Council President Brad Pike and incumbent Mayor Jason Pierce. Having four people, it's so hard to get 50 plus one um, in any election. And so uh, this happened, I think, uh, in 2007 when four people ran. And so it was kind of expected to happen. Also in Ada County, a bond to expand the Ada County Jail failed by less than 1%. The bond needed a supermajority of voter approval to pass. <laughs> Moving to the 2C, voters in Middleton turned out to approve liquor by the drink, which will allow bars and restaurants to serve liquor, with 70% of voters choosing to line up for liquor. Middleton voters also approved a supplemental school district levy and another school district levy in Nampa also got the thumbs up from voters. And in Caldwell, a bond to build a new fire station and upgrade another narrowly got the supermajority needed to pass with less than a tenth of a percentage point to spare which could lead to a recount. A person may request a recount if the difference in the votes is less than one-tenth of one percent, and it appears that this race, the difference of the votes, was falls within that threshold. We have all the stuff under lock and key, all the ballots, and we would just go through and, and recount every precinct that had that, uh, that bond measure on the ballot. We would just do a recount of the ballots and, you know, We've done recounts in the past, and they've always turned out exactly how they did on Election Day. Yeah, how about a shout out to all the election officials across the state of Idaho, uh, from big counties to small counties. They did a very seamless election. Of course, one year from now, we will be in a major cycle. The 2024 presidential race and the primaries leading into it next year will be something all of us will remember for a long time, but we will worry about that another time. In terms of this past election, if you have any questions or you want some more insight from our team, you can visit the voter guide at KTVB.com and we have all the results on our web page as well as some interviews with some of the folks that won elected office. Well, we're out of time again. Thank you to our guest this morning, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean. That's all we got for you. See you next time on Viewpoint.